Hey everyone, I'm Danny and welcome to Wizardry Workshop. Today we are making a golden snitch, 3D printed with my brand new Ender 3 Pro V2 3D printer that I just got. This is the first project that I've done, so I don't know all of the best techniques quite yet, but I, I will be building up to that. So if you have some, some pointers for me for 3D printing after watching this video, leave the comment down below. I didn't design the 3D models for this. I actually went and I found some free ones and I printed the wings from one model and the snitch from a different model because um, I just, I liked the, the flat wings and I wanted to bend them myself into shape. And then I liked the idea of the snitch opening up. And this was a really awesome snitch that actually opens up like a little ring box or something. So I will link both of those in the description box below. Here is the golden snitch that I printed with my new Ender 3. 3D printer and it turned out pretty good. I just used standard settings, so it's not perfect. You can see a little bit of the layering there, but you know, I'm not too worried about that. Um, I'd rather have a little bit of that than like more than double the time it would take. So there are pieces we're gonna have to break off. As you can see, we don't want it to be an oval. And this in particular one has a hinge, so it can open, open and close and I can put things inside of it. Um, and then we also have the wings. So here's one of the wings and it just prints flat. So uh, you'll have to bend it. There's another one here, which I bent this one as soon as it came out of the 3D printer. So it was pretty easy to bend. And then this one, I have not bent yet. I mean, you can still bend it, but it just pops right back into place. So we're gonna wanna heat this back up in order to bend it into shape. For this, I'll use my heat gun and this is a Heidi Swap Mink heat gun. Oh, it's starting to bend. There we go. I could feel the print start to like go a little wobbly and then it was super easy to bend after that. Yeah, they look about the same. So I've got these little like uh, clipper things that came with my 3D printer. So we're going to use this to sort of break that bottom part off here. There are pieces that the, the 3D printer prints on to this to keep it from falling over as it's printing. They're like little uh, support pieces. All these little pieces were pretty easy to break off of there. So here is what the two pieces look like when they're stacked together. And there's where the hinge is right here in the back. And they're not holding together obviously, but you have to put something in there. It looks like a little hole that goes all the way through the back here. So we're gonna have to put like something in there to make the hinge work so that these two pieces stick together. And there's also a place here and here for something. I might try putting a little magnet mechanism in there so it closes and stays closed. Uh, but first, let's paint. First thing we're gonna do is prime this with black. And then we'll be able to put the gold over on the top of this. It'll look a lot better than just trying to paint the gold onto the white. And now as you, that's basically disappeared in the camera's view, but the whole thing is black. All right, so let's set that aside and take a look at the wings. And now we can paint these black as well to prime them for painting them silver. Yeah, the paint is getting in between, but it's kind of like clogging up in there, I guess is a good way to put it. So we don't really want that. I'm gonna try and unclump in between these. Hmm, I might need to use, okay, this little thing was sitting there from a previous DIY. Yeah, you are gonna wanna get a piece of cardstock or paper or something to get in between all the little pieces on these wings so that the paint doesn't clump together. Now that the wings and the top and bottom of the snitch are painted black, we're gonna let these sit uh, at least a few hours. I'm about to head out, so I'm gonna let these sit overnight. And then when we come back tomorrow, we will paint them gold and silver. So we need a little more black to put to paint the insides of these. Just a light coat. This should not have to sit overnight. It's uh, morning now, so <laughs> I don't have to go home for a while, so I will just let these sit a couple of hours and continue on. 
For painting the wings silver, I have this uh, silver sterling paint from Folk Art. Uh, should be a pretty nice color, so. So now I've covered the whole wing in paint, and now I'm just sort of making sure everything is brushed in the same direction so it, it doesn't look too sloppy. And then you are gonna have to grab that card again and get the paint out from between each one of these. I will say the one that I bent right after it came off the printer is a lot sturdier than the one that I heated up to bend. So you probably wanna bend that. I might even reprint that wing. And now we let it all sit again, probably for a few hours. All right, so it has been about three hours and the top and bottom of this should be pretty much done, pretty much dry, except for the insides might be slightly damp, but that's okay, because we're gonna be painting the outside now with this um, antique gold from Folk Art. We will let that sit for, again, a few more hours. The wings now are completely dry, um, and you can see they do have a little bit of a metallic silver shine to them. And then we have the top and bottom, which have a bit of a, a gold shine to them, but it doesn't look quite as shiny as I want it to. So I thought, what could I use other than this metallic paint? And I came up with, I just thought of like a really good idea, the deco color gold marker. I love this thing for like gold foiling on paper, doing it by hand. And it's really shiny and gold. And I think I can make this part look really nice with this gold uh, paint marker, this metallic paint marker. So let's give it a try. I'm just going to start coloring. And almost immediately you can tell that looks a lot better. Now this does have some, some fumes if you use a lot of it, which I am using a lot of it. So you probably want to wear a mask or do it in a well-ventilated area. I am doing neither at the moment. Okay, so now just for, an, for some reference here, you can see this side. This is what I've done with that gold metallic marker. And this side is the, is the paint. You can tell a huge difference between the two. The metallic paint doesn't quite get it shiny, and I want it shiny like this. So yeah, this is perfect. And painting it was not a waste of time because now uh, any little parts that don't quite, that the marker doesn't quite get to, uh, it'll still have that gold look. So there we go. That's gonna look great when that dries. It's gonna be very shiny and gold, which is what we're after with the golden snitch. But these wings, although kind of silver and shiny, they're not quite what I want. They're a little muddy and not silver enough. I didn't have this brand, the uh, Deco Color Premium. This is the best one to use, as you can see. However, I, I got a silver metallic Sharpie. So we're gonna try that on the wings to make them silver. Honestly, it is difficult for me to tell the difference. I don't think this is making a big difference here. I also have this other brand, Top Notch, and it is also supposed to be a metallic silver marker. I don't see a big difference between this and the Sharpie though, but I think it is making it a little shinier. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish it off with this silver marker. On this one, I can definitely tell the difference. This side is looking better, lighter and more shiny. And then that side where the paint is, you can see is darker. So yeah, definitely use the silver marker as well. And there we go. These pieces are going to dry a lot faster. And it, from here, it looks like they're going to look a lot better with that on it instead of uh, the paint as a final finish. These pieces are now dry and they look pretty good. I'm happy with this result. Um, it's a little bit rough. If you get really close in there, close up, you can see the print uh, layers from the 3D printer. Um, I didn't do any like sanding or post-processing on this. I like This is the first project I've ever done with a 3D printer. Um, the first one I've done with my 3D printer. So I just, 
I, I'm a newbie, so I'm, I'm still learning. <laughs> I can probably do this a second time and maybe get it a little more smooth. And if that happens, I'll post an updated video. I would be curious to see what the uh, Deco Color Silver Premium uh, Gold uh, Silver Foil Marker would do because the Sharpie one, it's a little bit shiny, but it's not like reflective like this one is. You can tell there's a big difference. This one's more matte, so I'm not as happy with the wings, but they're the right color and you know it'll work. And so before I do anything else, I really want to work on this hinge here and um, make sure that I've got it working. And there, I've got a couple of ideas on how to do this. You might have the same problem as me, and that is that the paint has filled in these holes. So I'm just gonna take a thumbtack and go straight through there, um, kind of hollow out that, that hole again. So like I said, I have a couple of ideas on how to connect these. One is I got these hinges, and they're just about the right size to fit in here. So I'm going to see if I can take apart one of these hinges and use the pieces to make my own hinge there. If that fails, I also have this aluminum wire which I can shape and make a, a hinge that way. But first, let's try these. So let's see how easy they are. This metal here is to bend. Oh, super easy to bend. So that's going to be very easy to cut as well. I am going to get to the inside though because the inside pieces are really what I'm interested in. There we go. And it, that's probably just one piece that goes through there. We shall see. There it goes. Okay. Inside we do just have a little copper kind of bar. And that, let's see if it'll fit. It might be a little too wide. No, it fits, it fits right through there. So we might be able to just use this, and if so, that would be really cool. So I'm going to put them together, and I'm gonna push this metal bar through. You know what, I'm just gonna use the tack to sort of push it through a tiny bit more. There we go. So I've opened that up, we've got that bar in there now, so it will open and close. The Problem is now, that bar could easily fall out, especially if you're opening and closing this. Yeah, it's already starting to. If you open and close this too much, the bar is gonna move back and forth. I guess I didn't even need to buy and take apart these hinges. I like that I have that nice sturdy kind of copper bar in there, but you could still, you could use this or you know any, any small metal or aluminum thing that could go through there. And now, here's another test. Like I said, I'm, I'm new to 3D prints. This is a PLA print, and I know that it melts at uh, lower temperatures, I think, than, than other materials you can use for 3D printing. I'm gonna try a little tiny dot of hot glue, but I don't wanna melt this. So I have this uh, failed piece of a print that I was trying, a wand. Let's test this out and see if the hot glue melts the PLA. I know the tip of this will probably melt it. No, you know, it, it doesn't seem to have melted a thing. So I think just putting a couple little dots of hot glue back there will work. So I'm just gonna do a dot on this side and a dot on that side, just at the smallest amount I possibly can, just to fill those in and I'm gonna wipe some of it away. There we go. And you could use anything to wipe it away. I'm gonna use this failed print to sort of wipe some of this away. I was planning on maybe trying to put some magnets in here so that when it closed, it it stayed shut a little bit easier. But it's just, you would have to have this tiniest little magnets and I don't have any that small. I do have some magnets, but they're just too big for that. We're gonna attach the wings here, but first I just wanna make sure that, oops, oh no, that broke. Uh-oh, nothing a little hot glue can't fix, I hope. I don't think that hot glue is really going to hold it. So I've just kind of like placed the wings on there. I'm going to glue them in with hot glue, but I mean, that looks pretty good for just uh, a home project from a fairly uh, cheap 3D printer. It wasn't very much money. I mean, I guess it was, it was, it was like 300 bucks, but I mean, compared to other 3D printers, the Ender 3 is just a great value for for that and, and getting prints that look so good. This looks really, I'm surprised. 
So here's what we're going to do. We are going to put a drop of hot glue in this side and put the wing in. Wait a minute, let it kind of dry a bit, and then we're going to flip it over and do the same on that side. There we go. Make sure you have the correct wing. And then we're going to put it in up to about right there. Yeah, this hot glue is working perfectly. I am so glad that I decided to try this instead of this uh, super glue. Unfortunately, the wing that I tried to heat up and shape after the PLA had already dried, after it had been off the printer for a while, it did, it was weakened when I did that. So don't do that. Um, the wing broke. All right, so this new wing just came out. I'm just trying to make it shaped about the same as this one just carefully bending it we don't want it to break it's pretty close unfortunately now we have to paint it again which means i have to paint it black and wait overnight again all right so here we are this wing is done and dry i also colored or painted in the inside of the snitch as well the only thing left to do to finish the snitch itself is to connect this last wing. And that is the snitch. If you have something to put in there, like a little uh, stone, resurrection stone, go ahead and do that. I did also uh, color over hot glue that I used to kind of hold that bar in there. Now, to display this on my shelf, I am going to be putting it in this bell jar this is a, a gold a bell jar with a gold bottom it doesn't have to be a gold bottom it could be wood whatever i found this one at goodwill for like four dollars which is great uh there they do have some on amazon as well and i will link those they're a bit more pricey than four dollars but they are there um the one that I got, you can see, if you do get your second hand, sometimes they tape them together at Goodwill, so there's this sticky residue. And a lot of people swear by Goo Gone, but I'm gonna show you what I do. I don't use Goo Gone. I find uh, rubbing alcohol or nail polish remover or even hand sanitizer works better. So here we have some nail polish remover. You could also use a rag if you don't wanna be wasteful with the paper towels. So what I do is I get a good amount on here. You wanna get it pretty saturated there. And then you find the spot that is sticky and just wipe it away. And it typically comes right off. Sometimes you have to get in there with like a dry part of the paper towel and wipe it away, but it typically just comes right off of there. Same thing if you get one with like a price sticker on it and it doesn't want to it doesn't want to come off just saturate it in some some rubbing alcohol and then just wipe it away. Before we put the snitch in the bell jar, I want some way to make it stand up like kind of elevated inside the bell jar, but also something that looks nice and might kind of look like it's floating. The easiest and I don't know, best way I could think of is to use some sort of clear plastic and make a stand out of it. Now what I have here is an empty box that mink foil came in. And instead of just tossing it, tossing it out, I'm going to reuse it. So let's get our ruler and X-Acto knife. And I want you guys to be really careful as you do this because there is no uh, ruler to sort of keep the lines straight. And uh, <laughs> yeah, just be careful. I'm just trying to cut that off. I'm not using scissors because I want the line to be pretty straight and exact, and I'm worried that scissors might give it a jagged look. All right, not quite as clean as I wanted those cuts to be, but I think that's going to be, I think that's gonna be fine. So when we put it all together, It looks like this. And there we go. That actually looks pretty good if you ask me. I like it. There are some fingerprints on the jar, so I will have to fix that. But overall, I mean, that's a pretty cool looking 
presentation for a golden snitch. So let me know what you guys think. Um, I'm happy with it and I'll be making another one for myself. I'm gonna do like a version two probably where I add some different techniques next time around to try and get the print a little bit more smooth in my 3D printer. But if you're interested in winning this golden snitch, I will be giving it away and there is a giveaway link in the description box below. Down there, you're also going to find my 70K giveaway link. And this is for the Accio Box book covers that I designed, as well as the full set of hardback Harry Potter books that these book covers fit. So you get everything right there in that giveaway if you're interested. Again, the link's in the description box below. If you can think of any other project that I could do with my 3D printer, I'm pretty eager to use it because I'm just so happy that I finally got one. Let me know if you have ideas in the comment section below. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.